Hey, this is your pal EMDSD14R, and this is what I got for my birthday 2018. That's right, finally I'm able to make what I got for my birthday 2018 video. I know it's April the 21st, and this is probably going to be a two part video because I'm not going to be able to film my car um, in the darkness, so I'll wait till tomorrow or hopefully whenever the next nice day is and I'll film my car. But uh, yeah, this is um, the stuff that I got from, or for my birthday, actually. Um, some of these, a lot of these I bought, or my friend um, Rini from the Netherlands got them for me. Hey, Rini, thank you for the birthday gifts. They're awesome. I'm really appreciative of them, man. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, let me get started here. So the ones that my friend Rini got me, this is a DVD on trains in the Netherlands, and it goes into the history of them and different locomotives and stuff like that. It's a really good DVD. I finished watching that one. And then he got me the full Pentrix series of At the Throttle, which is really cool. I watched the first one, which is from San Bernardino, or which is the San Bernardino subdivision, Los Angeles to San Bernardino. And then I got it from Devore. To Barstow so I got these first two parts done I still have to watch this one and I still have to so I still have to watch part three and part four so part three is train meets and then part four is the Alameda corridor so I still have those two to watch but I will get to them and then I got this for myself this is the Antrac so it's Antrac the surf line um, so it basically shows you the surf line in the early years they ran with dash eights and fleets and Metroliner cab cars, and before um, what was it? Caltrain got their car, their their locomotives up and running. Amtrak was using their commuter coaches and so forth. Um, in yeah, they go into the history of that. You see Amtrak CF sevens at uh, switching in the passenger terminal, and they're they're in the uh, phase three paint scheme or phase two or something like that. And then we got the Pentrix tape on the Orange Empire Railway Museum. This is a very good uh, DVD because it shows you this particular museum. Um, I believe now they have a mini streamliner train, mini streamliner UP train that they run there now. So they have an E unit and I think four or five passenger cars that actually model one of the Union Pacific streamliner trains, but it's a shorter version, um, which is cool. Now... Those of you who know me, I'm huge in the Japanese anime. So you're probably looking at these right now. You're saying, oh my god, what did you get? Okay. So this one is the Blade Dance um, of the Elementors. I don't think there was a second season made of this, but it's pretty funny. Um, it's, it's comedy, but it's also got a good story plot. Um, great animation. And uh, just overall great. Um, it, there's kind of it's kind of like um, like there's sword fighting, but then there's kind of like mech mecha type magic battles in there, which is really cool. But it's mainly about you know magic users and swords and stuff like that. Um, this one, it's not a Blu-ray. I just stuck it in there because it didn't have a case. This one I got for free from Malaysia, and it says. Say I Love You. So I haven't even watched this yet. Not sure if this is a good anime. I haven't seen it, but I heard about it. But I still have to watch that. Um, now, this one is really good. Isuka. Um, it's basically, you know, magic and spirit users and demons and all that. But it's really got a good plot. The main character here has the ability to call out the names of spirits so the basically if in order to defeat a spirit or to control a spirit or you know to make it yours or something like that you basically have to call its origin name or its original name and he has the ability to do that without even you know knowing the uh spirit in depth um so she's the main heroine and then he is the main character so that's basically it that came from Malaysia so when I bought this 
I got this one for free. And then this one is a good one. Now, if you guys like um, World War II type air battles, this anime is pretty much like that. Um, the planes in here are based off of um, different planes you would see. Um, like the enemy, they have planes that are based off of the ME-109s. Um, there's some type, there's some variants of the, you know, I would say mini versions of the Osprey, but they're fighter, they're actually fighters, um, and they can land on water. It's a really, it's a really good anime. Um, don't think this, this is, this hasn't come out on the dub side yet. I don't know why, but, um, this hasn't come out on dub, and this hasn't come out on dub. Um, there is a movie that you can get on Amazon for this one. It's, um, an actual movie. I still have to buy that. And then this is the Buddy Complex, the complete collection. Now, this one, now if you guys look at this, those of you who like, and why did my color just go like that? There we go. There we go. So those of you who like Gundam 00, these are the same creators of that series, or those seasons. If you look at the mecha units in this picture. So they're the same people that did Gundam 00 and I think Gundam Seed uh, if I'm not mistaken, highly recommend getting this. I highly recommend it. It is worth. It is worth it. Watch the whole. I actually watched. I think it took me almost. Took me less than, what, how many days? Less than a day and a half to get through this. Not even that. Um, that's because I I had to go to sleep and all. But it probably would have taken me less time than that. Now. This one is called Total Eclipse. This is another Japanese anime mech um, theme series. There's a season one, and then there's a season two. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know anything about this one or these two. Basically, my thing is, if I like the front picture, I will look into the anime. That's how I always pick my anime. If I see a cool picture of it, I will see if there's an anime about it. I will look it up, and if I like it, I buy it. These, I actually didn't really have a chance to actually um, watch online. So I just basically solely went off the pictures that I saw, and I bought them, and they were worth it. But back to the Total Eclipse. So basically, Total Eclipse is about these Martians that are called the Beta that invade Earth, and these super advanced um, mech units half are designed or they're called TSFs, are designed to fight them. And every nation actually has their own TSF. Um, and believe me, it's it's really good, but uh, it's it's got some gore in there. Um, it's, there's some pretty sad moments in, in this anime. Um, I will admit that. There are some people that you think they're going to make it, and they end up dying pretty horribly. Um... Like some of, I would, I would have to say some of the most gruesome deaths you want to see in anime. Um, but there's some comedy in there. Um, there's some romance and, 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 and whatnot, but it, it's, it's, it's a pretty deep story. I don't even know why they didn't come out with a third season for this. There should be a third season because they just left it off where the main character, well, he's the main character. He's from, he's a Japanese American and she's from Japan. And, you know, these are some of the main characters. This is one of the twin sisters from Russia. And basically, all these mech pilots or TSF pilots, they pretty much fall for him. And the way that they let the ending go, I think they should have made a third season, honestly. Because there's nothing... You don't know what happens after that. Do they ever beat the beta? You know, that that's, that's my thing. Because a lot of these animes, I don't even think this has a second season. This doesn't even have a second season. This got a movie, but I don't know if they're making a second season. So there's a lot of good Japanese anime that are made and they don't get a third or they don't get a second or third season or even a fourth season. And it's kind of disappointing because if they have good plot and stuff, then, you know, that kind of goes down the drain. Um, but yeah. Oh, um, I also picked up, I know this is an old movie, but i never seen it, so I got, uh, 
Sherlock Holmes. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm real real behind on that. Uh, so I got that. Um, what else? Oh, right. I also got um the R30, the R30. Was this the R30? Let me see. Um, yep, the R30 Skyline. Yep, the 1982 R30 Skyline. This is my very first one. Hot Wheels actually finally brought this casting out recently. And I've actually just been keeping it in the packaging so I could make this video. Um, at the same time, they also made the R33, finally. Which is cool. And this is a GTR, by the way. And um, this is a pretty heavy casting. I like what they do with it. I think it's cool. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, So here you have it. This is my brand spanking new Bowser SD40-2. This is the GMD version, which is basically the Canadian branch of uh, Electromotive. This is lettered for the QNSNL, which is the Quebec North Shore and Labrador Railroad. And, uh, it's super detailed as you can see um, it's got the extra capacity fuel tanks it's got the roof mounted air pipes this actually is the air compressor back here normally the air compressor is tucked under here but because the the tanks are so large they had to relocate it back here and it's got all the correct GMD details K5 LA horn it's got snow shields let me just turn the sound off for a second or I'll leave the sound on my phone cut off because it was getting a little overheated but um, as you can see she's a great engine for some reason I can't figure out how to turn the rotary beacon on when I first got her and I put her on the track, the rotary beacon was flashing, the lights would come on and everything, but then the engine wouldn't move. So I reset the decoder. Now I can't get the beacon, I can't turn the beacon on. So I don't know what CV function to use on here to get the beacon to work, but I would like to get the beacon to work on this engine. That would be a really cool feature to have. Um, but other than that, um, she's great. This quick because my phone keeps cutting out because it's overheating. But she's greatly detailed. She's got the ditch lights, headlights, functioning number board, and white marker lights. Then I also got myself a second or another um, Santa Fe caboose. This is a blue box kit. I just put the Atlas caboose trucks on it. I'm going to have that painted or patched into ERNW. Saying I'm going to have this painted or patched into ERNW. And then that'll be it for that one. So, in the next scene, you're going to see my 2018 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. It'll probably be daytime because right now it's night. It's officially the 22nd of April, 2018. This is the second part to 
what I got for my birthday 2018 video. So this is my 2018 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. I got her on the 30th of March, which is five days after my birthday. So these are the, the rims here. Now what I was thinking about doing, I was thinking about having this all changed into like a, a, a blue or like a light blue or a dark blue. You know, because the car is blue. I wanted to have the matching color down here. But I like it so far so I'm going to leave it. Um, it's brand spanking new like I said. And uh, got the roof rack. I don't even know if I'll use these but I like them because they're cool. Um, gas caps on this side so, and it's uh, Outlander Sport as I said it even comes with a second set of mats I haven't even used these yet um, this is like a cover like this is the owner's handbook I mean I haven't even had a chance to really look at this car in detail um, it doesn't have navigation or anything like that but I don't really care comes with rubber mats don't think I need those um, registration came in for it so I had I could take the I took the sticker out the back because that was getting annoying um, it's four-wheel drive I was thinking about maybe I think these are reflectors I was thinking about maybe customizing them and putting LED lights in here at night and just have them come on with the turn signals and come on with like the brake lights so I was thinking about doing that. It's a four-cylinder. Um, and I keep it pretty clean. And my mom left her books in the back. So let me just take these out. Well, I'll take them out later. But I'll take them out after I'm done this video. But it's pretty clean. There's really nothing in here. Um, I, keep it I keep my stuff clean. I take care of my stuff. Oh, the cool thing about this is, so I have all my music on a flash drive. The, the new cars, from what I hear, they're not going to have CD players anymore. So everything you want has to be on your flash drive or like your MP3 or your iPod. So the music will be playing, right? Like I can do this, push play. And then what I can do is if I leave the car, take it out, right? Now check this out. It'll start playing the song from where you last left off, which I think is cool. And it just hit over a thousand miles uh, yesterday. So it's got the uh, Bluetooth. So I can control my radio from there, my phone from there, um, my cruise control. Um, as I said, it's a four cylinder. Let me see if I can pop the hood open. So I'll just pop the hood. And it's in four-wheel drive mode. I always keep it in four-wheel drive. So let me see. This is actually the second time. Yeah, so this is the engine. It's clean. So this is my window washer fluid. This is my overflow tank. Uh, this is where I check my oils. Yes, there are cars that are still made that you can use the oil stick or the dipstick, as they say. Um, this is the battery here. Um, this is the air filter box. This is the fuse. I think this is the yeah. This is the fuse box here. Um, so yeah, that's. This is actually my second time looking at this engine. Um, since I bought it. Now you can put this in now this is this is the the cool thing about it is you can put this in four wheel drive, four low, and front wheel drive. So this is that's the cool thing about this car. I am thinking about getting a strut bar for there uh, in the future. I don't think they cost that much. I'm probably just gonna add that. Maybe change the engine cover here. Um don't know if I'll do any other modifications maybe put a different air filter on here um, but yeah that's that's what it is 
So, and there's my little, you know, thing right there. But I, I like it. Now, over in Germany, this is called a different name. It's called the ASV. So the Outlander Sport in the U.S. is called the ASV in Germany. And I just found that out from one of my followers on Instagram. So yeah. So let me close this hood real quick and uh, call it a day. So yeah. That's my car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Oh, and I put my train license plate on if you guys didn't notice. Alright? So hope you guys enjoyed the video. God bless and see you later.